taking antibiotics, vaccines kind of work in the same way that your immune system works. It's like a stimulant to your immune system. And so it's really just trying to prime it against that flu. That said, they're not without their risks. Um, but those risks are pretty teensy. So there's some vaccines that are like, no question, you should get a measles, mumps, rubella shot when you're like, too. If you, yeah, if you get rabies, you, you want the best. For pretty sure, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> the yearly flu shot is more controversial because it's less effective, but the risks are pretty low overall. Yeah, oh, I, I mean, it's if you are a day of flu, there's a good chance you'll reduce your risk if you get a yearly flu shot. And the risk to your health overall is very low. It's much different and much lower than taking a whole course of antibiotics or something like that because it's just sort of a stimulating shock to your immune system. Uh, so I'd say go get it if you're worried about it, but like year over year, you're, if you fight off the flu successfully for a decade and don't take flu shots, you are more primed to naturally defend a wider variety of flu viruses. So you might make the argument that like over time, you're robbing yourself of the chance to be as strong and robust as you could be against the flu if you take it. Yeah, and I would say the mistake is that uh, if you get a flu shot and then you don't do anything else, like if you don't exercise and you don't eat spicy foods and you're not, you know, eating good nutrition and you're smoking and drinking every night, like the flu shot is not going to protect you from MRSA. It's not going to protect you. <laughs> no, it's not going to protect you from a lot of things, you know. And um, I think that just the biggest mistake with with modern medicine is that we feel like we have these miracle drugs, and therefore we can stop doing all of the other things, like feeding our animals a diversity of food. You know, like I was thinking with this whole agriculture resistant thing, like not only are we feeding them antibiotics continuously, but we've also taken away the diversity of what they would normally eat by eating grass and weird plants. And that is like their way of strengthening their own immune systems in the same way that us taking herbs and eating a diversity of food strengthens our immune system. So that's something that I didn't even think about until tonight. It's really a shame. So yeah, I would just say like, if you're gonna get a flu shot, okay, cool. But do a lot of other things too. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Would you just talk a little bit about your practice and the kinds of things that you're treating? Yeah. The kind of courses of, of meditation you have. Sure. Thanks. I often forget to do that. Um, so. The program that I did at Thai Sophia, which is now the Maryland University of Integrative Health, uh, it's in Columbia, and it was a three-year program, and the last year was really focused on supervised clinical practice. So I'm not a farmer. I don't really actually know a lot about growing medicine. What I do know about is like how to listen to people and hear their whole story and examine all of the things that are coming in and all the ways that they're relating to those things and having an understanding of patterns. Um, so what I do clinically in a space in Upper Fells Point is I you know, do consultation with people. The first one is usually 90 minutes to two hours long. We look at everything that's going on and then also like your primary concern, whatever you're coming in for. Um, I really wish that there were more doctors in Maryland that I felt like I could collaborate with because there are definitely things that are out of my realm. You know, a lot of the things that I feel like herbal medicine is really good for are things that are systemic, chronic, reoccurring, and things that Western medicine just has nothing to offer for. Unfortunately, infectious disease is quickly becoming one of those things, uh, whereas like you know, 20 years ago, I don't think herbalists like ever worried about treating MRSA or, you know, like crazy staph infection, but now we are. Like now we're going to rainbow gatherings with our bag of tinctures and treating people with staph infections there, you know? So it's definitely changing uh, what herbalists are focusing on. I studied, West, I studied Western herbalism, so it's different than Chinese medicine 
that's kind of like a whole different outlook. Western medicine, or Western herbalism is really more focused on like understanding the biomedical perspective of the body, but then also understanding the traditional perspective of medicine and then combining those two. Does that answer your question? Yeah. If people want to know more about my personal practice or the classes that I'm offering in October, I have a website that my friend Dina made, and it's beautiful, and it's called oherbalmedicine.com. Very easy to remember. And I also have business cards. Other questions? <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be very good. Uh, I certainly am going to have some. Uh, I'd like to thank both Olivia and Patrick once again. <laughs> Something I noticed about Olivia's lecture is that uh, over the course of being distracted from herbalism by the bats and the uh, skulls, I got into myrrh. And that was on like every single one of those lists. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so that's, that's it for this evening. Um, of course, the next lecture series will be on the 9th of October. I think that's two Wednesdays from now. And um, we're going to have a husband-wife duo speaking. Uh, Lori Travis is going to be talking about uh, the recovery from Hurricane Katrina and the privatization that went on during that. She was working for the, I, I believe she was working for the Louisiana Senator at the time. I sadly don't know who that was. But she's going to be talking about the, the crazy, terrible things that was happening there. And her husband, Aaron Travis, is going to talk about bizarre literature. <laughs> um, and I have a real good reason I put those together and I'll talk about it on the night. So come and find out what I'm going to say. Uh, now, now comes the portion of the evening where we talk about the other shows that might be occurring between now and then. Um, I know that tonight there is a variety show going on at the Auto Bar. Uh, I also know that our, our good friend Liz King is going to be playing at Club K. Um, and that's all I know about what's going on in the next two weeks. So if anybody else has any shows that are coming up or... I actually have a class. Um, next Tuesday at my apothecary, I'm going to give a class about uh, herbs to reduce stress. And there's going to be tea. We're going to get to taste some teas. So if people want to come to the apothecary and check out that and hear more from me, um, you can send me an email, pick up a business card and send me an email. Okay? That's the mom's thing tomorrow. Oh, at Florida Street? Mm -hmm. With Nat Fowler. He mm -hmm. was in Oxford. Oh? And he was now. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 so exciting. Um, there's a very wonderful play coming up in a week from tomorrow. It'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the following Friday, Saturday at St. Mark's Church. It's written by Lola Pearson and directed by Anita and Mel. And I'm in it, and Jeff's in it, and you'll all really like it. What's it called? It's called Heart Happens. Heart it's Happens? Yes. Oh, I was going to talk about the next. And before that, this Friday, there's a benefit for that play and theater company that's also at the church with a lot of exciting musicians and poets and theater people and dancers and an auction. Ooh. So you should come to auction. Who doesn't love an auction? <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, other shows? I mean, yes? Um, well, I'm teaching a class on Saturday at 3 on uh, Russian uh, massage, Russian body work. If anybody interested, you just talk to me. I was going to tell you a couple of you that I know. Anyways, and I got a regular class on uh, Sundays at 4.30 on uh, Russian martial arts. Where, where are these classes? 
Help? Uh, well, the Sunday class is in the park, the Jewish World Park. Okay. And, and uh, the, the body will class be in my house unless there's training. Which I like. but... All right. Well, this is excellent. I'm happy that other alternative education is being advertised for like This is kind of like the first time it's ever really gone there. Is there any free school people here? Is there, what's going on in free school? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, this is an open call for art. The Charles Gator Art Wall is going to get hung their final group show in 2013. So if anyone has any art that falls within the theme of paranormal, uh, you can bring it to the Charles at any time before next Wednesday. Next? Yes? Uh, I just wanted to say that this is the last weekend that Jimmy Joe Roach's show is on view at the Baltimore Museum of Art. And I would just hope that any of you who haven't seen it take advantage of seeing this incredible work, which is juxtaposed with the work of Nathaniel Miller's, um, an artist who lives in Holland and Los Angeles. But the real reason to go is to see Jimmy's work. It's just so awesome. And some of it is an installation that once it's taken down, you know, it's like being on for a long time. So please come. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that. It's free. Um, it's not scheduled yet, but uh, I've been discussing with the free school on having a uh, group discussion for about two months on modern physics and philosophy. Oh, far right. Well, I personally am someone who, don't, who doesn't like schedules, so <laughs> having it not be scheduled makes it even more appealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is, is, is that it for the future? Is that all?